Well, my next guest is someone who has seen issues surrounding biotechnology from both a practical and a political standpoint. Joining me now is one of the 22 representatives appointed to the reactivated USDA Advisory Committee on Biotechnology and the 21st Century Agriculture, also known as AC21, Mr. Keith Kislick. Thank you for being here. And let's just call it AC21 from here on out because that was a mouthful. What is AC21? Well, the AC stands for Advisory Committee for the 21st Century. It was appointed, this committee was appointed by Secretary Vilsack, USDA, and it's to look in the future at what biotechnology problems are and solutions can be. And so these 22 people are going to have about four meetings this year to try to come up with some kind of a vehicle to help that situation out. And this is such a broad issue because I know you're the former chairman. If someone people don't know, you were the former chairman of U.S. Wheat Associates, which is the marketing arm for wheat growers around the nation internationally. Uh, and we were on a, a trip to the Middle East, and you, you took me with you on a trip to the Middle East talking about wheat and, and selling the wheat to the Middle East. And I, I just want you to take the story, pick the story up from there of what we found out. Rob, I first want to thank you for going on that trip, being such a soldier for the wheat producers in Oklahoma and the United States, because you did get a lot of coverage on that. And what we found out at that time, I think it was 2002, was uh, the 20 countries, Middle East countries, that was in uh, the Ag Forum at that time in Egypt, was they didn't want biotech anything, anything. And in fact called biotech wheat, uh, Frankenstein wheat, that they wouldn't feed their kids. So since that time, we've had the charge from uh, National Wheat Growers, U.S. Wheat Associates, uh, knowing that biotech wheat was coming and knowing that there hasn't been any scientific evidence of a problem with biotechnology. So 75% of our growers want that product. So we've been trying to educate our overseas customers so we don't lose those markets overseas in the next eight to 10 years. Yeah, so unfortunately some of this perception is reality. So where are we now with biotechnology and the wheat crop? Well, in the wheat crop, we're about eight to 10 years out from a release. Uh, this biotech committee, uh, what we're trying to do is come up with some co coexistence between uh, organic farmers, your traditional farmers, and the, and the uh, genetically engineered crops so that they can live together and that we don't have lawsuits all the time when there's some gene that comes out that, that corn or beans or wheat needs that we can implement and get released uh, without some kind of a problem and take two or three years to have it happen. So that's what we're trying to do to come up with that vehicle to take care of that. Yeah, and, and by all appearances, this does look like the, the future of agriculture and something that is, is truly needed. Well, I don't think there's any doubt now with population increase and um, wheat stayed pretty stable for years, for 50 years. We really haven't increased uh, yields very much. Corn and beans have just skyrocketed since uh, genetically modified has come out. And so I think it's just necessary for down the road that we do something to increase that. All right. Well, I appreciate you coming by and do keep us posted as these meetings go on. Thank you, Keith.